Hello, everyone. How are you? How are you doing? I am Mr. Thomas. As always, and well, this is our new lesson. Let me just share it here. Well, as you already know, that we are still dealing with stress. This is our third unit. As always, this is our 12th guide. This is the Intermediate English course for Business English. And well, today is 16th of February. And well, so for today, I had just prepared a a simple uh, set of activities. I'm not, I don't think they were rather complicated. You can afterwards tell me on the comments, comment section whether it was complicated because it shouldn't be. I know that you remember that we're dealing with an intermediate level here. It's not exactly too difficult, but well, it could be. In any case, if you find it hard to do, you can always tell me so that I can have an, a sense of your level of difficulty. Uh -huh. uh, yes, how hard is it for you? But well, for example, here we have a matching activity. It says match the words to their definitions, A and E, and the words one to five to the definitions A and E. And we have, well, the definitions are, a time or date by which you have to do something is letter A. We have B, a system where employees choose the time they start and finish work each day. C, the way people choose to organize their lives. D, someone who cannot stop working has no time for anything else. That's D. What about E? Here it says, the amount of work a person is expected to do. And so, for example, in number one, we have lifestyle. So you have to think for yourselves, what is that lifestyle? What does it mean you want? What do you think about when you think of, about your own lifestyle? And well, so it's actually the style of life. <laughs> that you have. You can actually think it that way, although it's not entirely correct to to, uh, to consider that word in that sense. It's not entirely correct, but it can be useful. It depends if it's useful for you. So, number one is obviously C. The way people choose to organize their lives. And what about this one here? Number two, workaholic. What is that workaholic? You have to ask yourself. For example, think of the word work as in labor, as in, as in the profession, the job you have chosen to do. And think of the, uh, the ending aholic, which means Addictive, addictive, yes, addictive. So for example, if someone who is addicted to his job or her job, it, it can work either way. And so, for, and so obviously it's about D, it says here, workaholic means someone who cannot stop working and has no time for anything else. It says here, workload. And um, again, we do the same, the same process. I hope it, it's useful for you in the future when you have to sit for the final examination from this course. I know that you all want to get a certificate. So, well, I hope you don't have a problem with it. You have no problem, no trouble doing the final examination that I have been preparing for you. So for example, here we have, uh -huh, we do the same process as the one before 
we think of the word work and load and the ending load and so it means something that is heavy that it's uh, hard to to deal with and so for example and we think of the word work and so we say that is a type of work that is actually a lot of work a ton of work and so well here we can we can think we can say is it a time of the day in which you have to do something and you say no it's a system where employees choose the time they start for and finish work for each day no is it well we have already done this too here so is it the time of is it the amount of work a person is expected to do yes and so we match it right here and well for example it says here deadline you have to ask yourself what is a deadline in this case there is no way to how can i say it to infer use that expression infer it means when you guess something Take into account the context. That's, that's what it means. So, well, I hope it is useful for you in that sense. I truly hope so. And so, for example, it says here, sorry, let me just add the two. Always remember, remember that if you're uh, writing down an infinitive, you are supposed to obviously always add the to infinitive. And so we say to infer, always. There are almost no uh, exceptions. I don't know if there is one actually. But this is just for the infinitives. Trust me, it, can, it will be, it could be useful. Maybe or maybe not. Uh, you can always say, tell me whether you find it. You can always leave it on the comment section where you find all of my advice is useful. You can you can just say that. <laughs> if you don't like them, then it's okay. <laughs> I hope you. That it's not too much for you. So well, for example, here we can say, is it a time or a date by which someone have to do when why which you have to do something. And is it a system where employees choose the time they start and finish work each day? And so, no, the letter B is not that is not the meaning of deadline. And so we say deadline is a time of day by which you have to do something. And well, we have flexi time. That it's a it's actually a new expression for me. So, if it's new for you, uh, I'm glad because it's always good to learn new words, new words. And so, for example, we have flexi time. It's a system where employees choose the time they start and finish work each day. No, sorry, I am going to erase it because you may not actually un understand much of it if it's all a mess here. Just do this. So, well, yes, we're going to add it this way here. Okay, no, sorry. Lifestyle, C. Have workaholic D now oh, someone let me just add it right here.
we have workload and it's E we have deadline which is A we have flexi time that is B And well, that's it for the first activity. So now we're going to complete each sentence with the appropriate word from list in exercise A so that you can uh, establish firmly what you just learned in the previous exercise. It could be very useful as well for the final examination. It's always good to remember the definitions and acquire. That's a good expression to acquire new words. So, well, for example, it says here, I worked until 11 o'clock at night. Wow. <laughs> to me, the for presenting the report. So, well, you could say that it, it talks about a, a workaholic person, but it's not. But uh, let me give you an advice here. Uh -huh. Meet the deadline, it's an expression. It's a very, uh, it's a fixed expression. That, that's what it's called, to meet the deadline. I'm going to write it right here. To meet the deadline. That's an expression, very useful for you. So I hope you wrote the, the correct expression here. Many of you could think that it's, to me, the workaholic <laughs> or presenting the report because it says, I worked until 11 o'clock at night. It's so tiring. And so in number two, it says, I work six, six days a week and I never have a holiday. My girlfriend says I am a, it's obviously that it's workaholic. Very good. Well, the next one, number three, it says Carl has heavy Da, 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 at the moment because several colleagues are off sick, off sick. So if a person has a lot of something because the colleagues are absent, then, well, we're talking about obviously a workload. So you have it right here, workload. Remember this expression, to meet the deadline, because it's not so easy to, re to infer. Remember what I just said about infer, infer, no, inferring, <laughs> sorry. Is it inferring? Maybe inferring, uh, I don't know if, <laughs> if it exists, so <laughs> very good, yes. We have our offset, and so we have workload. And it says here, she gave, she gave up a highly paid job to join a meditation group in India. She's completely changed her. Well, what did she change if she gave up a highly paid job? If it, she gave up something in her life to join a meditation group in India. So we can think of the word life. Uh, we can think of the, the expression style of life, although it's not correct, but well. We have almost the same expression, so we can say lifestyle. But remember, style of life, I'm not sure if it exists, so uh -huh. uh, try not to use it. <laughs> Very good, yes. Lifestyle. We have a da -da 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 system. 
can help to reduce stress levels of employees by giving them more control over their working hours. Well, there is no other option, so in this case, it's flexi time. I truly hope it is a new word for you because it's a really work, really new word for me. Flexi time. I also hope that you have a flexi time as well. So well, let's just change the page. Uh, and well, this is a very quick language review. I hope and I think that you if you signed up for this course, you have a lot of knowledge about the past simple and the present perfect. But it's always a good idea to revise. Uh, as always, I always say that it's a good idea to revise, to do a quick revision. In this case, it says, answer the questions about the sentences in, in italics. And so you can say, she has worked in Warsaw for five years. Five years. And so she say, does she work in Warsaw now? And so you can think, she worked in London for three years. And so think of the word, does she work in London now? And well, that gives you the hint that this is present perfect. Because remember, you have to ask yourself, what do you know about the present perfect? The most obvious difference is the use of the verb to have as an auxiliary. Because, well, you're talking about something that started in the past, in the past, <laughs> and it's going on till this very moment. It's, it's an ongoing process. Let me just add it right here, ongoing process. That's the expression for it, ongoing process. So the, we say the present perfect is an ongoing process. You also have the past perfect, but it's extremely complicated. So let's just say that it's good to just think about the present perfect as an ongoing process. And well, we use the auxiliary had to have as an auxiliary. That's the main difference. And you probably re remember that. And so you can say, which sentence one or two uses the past simple and which sentence uses the present perfect? And well, here you, you say that we use the past simple to talk about completed actions that happened in the past, in the past, sorry, yes. And so remember that the past simple means that it's something that is already complete, it's finished. And so it says they worked over last, over last weekend to meet the deadline. Remember, let's let's highlight it to meet the deadline. That's for you, so you can remember. And well, we also use it to refer to a definite moment or period in the past. So you can say that it's they made a presentation on Monday. Always remember this exp this expression on on certain day always because it's uh, it's not easy to remember. Never, never, don't ever say in Monday. Always say on Monday, on Sunday, on Wednesday. It's all for talking about a moment in in time. We usually use the preposition on. I hope you know noted you you noted that. <laughs> so when we say the present perfect connects the past and the present. We use the present perfect in that case. And so we talk about past actions that affected us, that they are still affecting us now, at this very moment. And so our company has just introduced flexi time and everyone's delighted. Oh, right. Interesting. 
and so well we we go on talking and we say to talk about life experiences is when when you refer to you, yourself and you talk about you and you you talk about your experiences and so we say we talk about life experiences and we say things like i've worked with many companies where stress was a problem my god yes it must must be a problem in many many companies in many many work, working environments and so to announce the news that's a new one for me <laughs> the ceo has appointed a new management team and so we announced news with that and so well yes we we say so we go on to the final part here i told you this this was a very quick uh lesson because it's all about practicing practicing remember that we are nearing the final examination in a on april <laughs> on that's uh, another expression on april another example of these of uh, the preposition on so we say cross out the incorrect sentence in each pair stress levels have increased in re recent years so we have to cross out the incorrect one so we we don't ever say stress levels increased in re recent years recent years so for example in number two it says the role of women changed dramatically over the past 100 years and so and after all we can just say the role of women has changed dramatically over the past 100 years and usually when we are mentioning a time a period of in an amount of time that has passed usually people tend to use present perfect so the incorrect sentence in each pair and so we scratch this one here The role of women has changed dramatically over the past 100 years. And well, this one here, he has worked as a stress counselor since 1999. And he worked as a stress counselor since 1999. And you have to ask yourself, is it about experience? Is it about uh, talking about completed actions? Is it about referring to a definite moment or period in the past? Is it about talking about past actions that affect us? Is it about talking about life experiences? Is it about talking about announcing news? And so this is more like it talks about a definite time in the past. So it actually it should be the one below because we're still using the present perfect. Worked as a counselor since 1999. Usually when we add the expression since, we tend to use present perfect, usually, not always. But well, there are, there are always exceptions. But well, usually, when we add an expression since da 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 da, uh, it, no, it normally means the perfect tense. Sorry, not tense, the perfect form. Because it could either be past perfect, present perfect, not future perfect. Because well, <laughs> it's a really hard thing to explain. Well, how do we use the present perfect? Trust me, very hard. It's for advanced levels, and this is for intermediate ones. And so here it says, "I resigned two months ago." And so I have resigned two months ago. Am I still resigning my job? No. 
Did I resign my job at my job? Yes. And so we, in this case, we're talking about a, a an exper previous experience in the past. So we scratch that sentence. I have resigned two months ago. We say, I resigned two months ago. And well, in number five, it says here, have you ever been to a stress counselor before? And the second one, it says, did you go, did you ever go to a stress counselor before? And it could be correct if we use the past perfect in this case, but it's not, we are using the present perfect. And so in this case, we say, have you, oh, sorry, not that one. <laughs> The incorrect one, the incorrect. So be careful with that. Number six, it says, I have seen a stress counselor last week. And you had to ask yourself, am I still seeing the same person at this very moment? Or am I referring to a person that I saw <laughs> last week? <laughs> And so, obviously, the incorrect one is the one using present perfect because we're talking about a previous experience that has just that has finished. And so we say, I saw a stress counselor last week. And this is a very interesting uh, exercise. It says here, write the time expressions from the box under the correct heading. under the correct heading and so well here I design a new chart because this is a very short one <laughs> right so it says here so far and it mean and we often use that to the present perfect remember what I just said about since 1999 we tend to we normally for present perfect the expressions we tend to use those expressions They are actually call, called adverbials. I'm gonna write it right here, adverbials. I hope you find it, you find that useful. I, I truly hope so. So, for example, it says here in nineteen ninety nine. But well, we can all. Uh, some of them are actually not very clear cut. So, a a a different type of process that you can use is just by crossing out the ones that are that belong to either the present perfect or the past simple, and so we can just. Search for this ones here, for all the present perfect. And for example, you have ever, have you ever? And so we add here to the present perfect. It's a very common expression when we say, never have I ever, or have you ever? So we, we put it right there on the chart with present perfect. Right, it's ever, and so. Ever, yes. And what about in 1999, because. Well, it can either go to the present perfect, it could go. Uh, well, if it was added to another type of time adverbial, so we say in 99, no, sorry. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's what we use here. What about yet? 
Have you done it yet? Why haven't you done it yet? You can always ask yourself in your brain expressions with those time adverbials. So, we say yet here. So, just, I have just, you, you can ask yourself, have you, what, what have you just do? Have you just done? Have you done? Or what did you just do? Because it can also go either. It says under the correct heading. But it, I, in my opinion, it can either go into with the past simple or with the present perfect. In my opinion, trust me, Probably it's not. It's probably for only for the the present perfect. So we can put both of them here. Just yeah, just yes. Yesterday. Well, in this case here, yesterday. You can always do what children tend to do when they do they when they <laughs> tend to do when they do. <laughs> children tend to do when they are uh, completing this type of exercises. You can either just cross the correct uh, expression. Uh, I mean, cross the the ones that you have just chosen and classify. It's a very useful, uh, useful technique. Then you can also apply to examinations because it's very, very useful. So we write it here yesterday. And well, for the past two weeks, so you have to think yourself. What have you been doing for the past two weeks? But in that case, it's the past, <laughs> it's the past perfect. But well, it could be also used for the present perfect. So we say for the past. For the past few weeks, weeks. And well, we have already. Already. And well, already cannot hear already. Well, already, uh, <laughs> I think it could go with past simple. Uh, probably I am wrong. So if you put it right here with present perfect, it's correct. Congratulations, you're, you're done it. Correct, very good. Just for the past few weeks, Already, yes. Just passed for the past few weeks. For the past few weeks, so already, and yes, I'm going to scratch it right here. Never. So, well, you can ask yourself, have I, he has never done that before. And so, well, something must be class classified under the, the heading past simple. <laughs> but, well, you can, I think you can both, you can use both because you can either say he never realized that or 
he had never realized it or he has never realized how much I love her. Ah, she has never realized. Ah, so cute. Bird well. He has never. So here we scratch it again. So what about last Monday? What did he do last Monday? Because you're talking about something that happened that uh, you're talking, you're referring to a time that has, that is finished. It has passed. It is in the past simple. So we say last Monday. <sighs> Sorry, yes, last Monday. So he scratched it right here. And what about during the 1990s? And well, you can say that something happened. For example, I was born during the 1990s. And well, if I was born in that time, it's something that has already this has already it's a time in the past it has already passed it's finished and so you can say during the 90s right here yes what about over the last few years Interesting, because well, you can you can always try to make an example. You can say global warming has uh, increased over the last few years. And so yes, it can be used for the present perfect over the last few years. It's always a good idea to add a mental example. Although mental sense actually means crazy, but well, it depends on your perspective. But that's mental. Hmm. Sorry that I couldn't make it bigger because the, the system doesn't allow me to. <laughs> the system didn't allow me to. That's another example of past simple. Over the last few years, and so we say since 2001. And remember what I just said about the expressions like since. And well, here during the 1990s, over the last few years, And we say since 2001. And remember what I just said about since 2001. So we add it right here since 2001. Well, for example, you can say prices have inflated since 2001, has been, uh, you can say inflation has increased since 2001. You can either say that as well. You can always try to use an example in your mind and you will find the answer you need for it. So said that it has increased since <laughs> 2001. <laughs> uh, when I was at university, well, that's that's obvious. It's past simple because you're actually using the the auxiliary was instead of has. Remember what I just said about the use of has and was. And so, yes, 
we say when I was at the university. Very good. So those are the answers. I am going to obviously upload this into the platform. And thank you, boys and girls. Thank you for paying attention. I hope my advices are useful. I truly hope so. If you have any doubts, you can always say that. You can always tell me on the comment section. Or you can just uh, not write uh, class lessons are not going to be uh, uh, mandatory because uh, we, we have, we've been having, we have been, that's another example of present perfect. We have been having problems with uh, Google. So there is no way for me to record the lessons entirely. And so, well, uh, I hope these videos are useful for you because they are the only thing that I can do right now. They are very short and I hope you find them useful. I'm going to upload the link for it as soon as I get, I, as I am able to upload this into my uh, uh, YouTube channel that you can subscribe. You can just... <laughs> Give me like, you can just like and subscribe. <laughs> it's a very, it would be very, 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 very nice for me. So, well, thank you everyone. And I'll see you next week. Bye.